We are seven years to get on stage in New Orleans. I am Dallas Stevens. I'm a backstage manager at Cirque du Soleil. I've performed for 15 years and I've been stage managing for the last three months. I'm Mark. I'm the side electrician in HVAC and I've been with Cirque eight years. We've been together four years. Tour life's wonderful, but you don't always have people to talk to that, that are personal. So having someone on tour with you that you can personally talk to and have a rapport that goes outside of the professional environment really helps. Someone to relate to on tour. Yeah. I travel with my husband that happens to work with me, so it's pretty convenient. We have a two-year-old daughter, and we always have another family member watching our kids. On the Sunday is when we get all the kids and all the families to come, so it's actually a very happy day. They're playing and all the families sit together and can share a nice meal. Uh, and it is a day that you know that all the families will come. So it's nice you can plan on hanging out and having your kids play with the other ones outside. So it is for sure our, our, our big family day is on the Sunday. Today, as oh, Sunday, we have their kids' circus. All the kids come here and they do acrobatics. For me to live on tour, it's an amazing experience. I get to see all the countries, cities, I get to meet new people. We have uh, a band made up of three technicians and myself. We're practicing in one of, the, one of the trucks that you see on site. It's the sound department's truck where they keep all their equipment. And so we figured that was a perfect place to set up some drums and speakers. and. Uh, go hang out after the show at night. Big Tops, we're a whole village. We travel with everything, we built everything, uh, raised the tents and all that. On Curios, we have a 109 cast and crew. We're around 60% staff, 40% uh, artists. Uh, we're from 21 different countries around the world. A multitude of languages that are being spoken. Hola, yo soy el Nicolau Baixas. Привет, mi nombre es Andrei Bandarenka. Bonjour, mi nombre es Gabriel Baudouin. Gracias. Lego Meirini. I guess that what makes this show and Cirque so unique is that uh, we really do bring people from all over the world together for one common goal. And it's just a beautiful thing. The first time I see the Chapiteau, it's, it's an emotion that is, uh, there's nothing that beats that, you know? Because it's all over the world that travels, the family, the community. This is the, the country we live in, you know? You're backstage, you feel home. We take care of our people, the employees, the artists, the crew. We have to move them around, we have to lodge, and make sure everyone has a house. We're here for usually about a month or two. I love exploring a new city on my bicycle. That is one of my favorite things to do in the world, is just get on my bike and get lost. It's easy to start to feel like you're at home in a place, and then you have to leave it, and then you leave all the people you meet. And that's a little disappointing, but it's part of it. And you know it's going to start over again in the next city, too. This no longer becomes a job when you're on tour. It's a whole other way of living. You leave behind your friends, your family, and, and you join this group of people, and they become your friends. We are a very good group. It's really like a family. You must be joking. All the values of Cirque du Soleil are rooted in the Big Top and the way of life of a Big Top show. We are travelers. We're travelers in imaginary worlds.
the inspiration, I'm told, there was some problem with a flying trapeze net in Zarkana. And so they sent some engineers to look at it and that got them thinking, well, what if we took this problem and amplified it? What if we took that bouncy net and made it bouncier, made it of a different material that could actually give more rebound? So after they did a bunch of research and development on that, they gave us the Acronet and then uh, we had to create an act on it. It's like a giant trampoline on the, for the viewer, but after we have like a very slow bounce on it, completely different. Like if I'm trying to jump by myself on it, I'm going to be at one meter high and that's it. I need like six guys around me to push me to go at 10 meters high. So it's like a teamwork and not like a single walk like on a trampoline. You don't see the net when you're jumping, when you're super high, I see the stage and that's it. So I'm like looking, I'm gonna smash the stage, but the net is here, I, I don't see it. You have to, to like adrenaline. Even after like, I don't know, 500 show, I have adrenaline, but at the same time, I want to do it and I like to do it. Even just to work on the net, like six guys working on the net together, that's something you need to understand. If you're putting a new guy, I'm sure, working, just working on the net with us, it's gonna be falling all the time. It's like you need to understand the net. It's hard for the cardio, like you're out of breath when you finish the number, but you're having fun. Our coach was an Olympic uh, trampolinist and he got on the net and thought he was going 10 feet high. He was maybe a couple feet off and was terrified. So even for a person like him, it's a completely different experience. Acronet, that's really complicated. It uses almost all of the automated equipment on our show. That's 15 axes. So we've got some towers, chain motors, winches, and then we have a whole uh, load cell system, which is that screen over in the back there, where we can monitor all of the loads around the tent and inside to make sure the net is exactly at the tension that the artists need to be able to do the show. It's designed and invented by Cirque du Soleil. In Montreal, they use about two weeks, a team of five people to install the mesh into this ridge rope. This net was retired last city. We need pieces from it. We're gonna use it to build a, a newer net that is gonna be as a backup in the show. We have a big evolution from the beginning. If you're looking at the premiere in Montreal uh, last year, and you're looking at the number right now, the catching seconds completely different. Yeah, every time like when you get comfortable doing like an acrobatics, at some point like you say, okay, I'm gonna try uh, another twist. It's very cool. I am so proud of this number, and I'm I'm really happy to be able to share with the world something so unique. That's kind of why I wanted to do this job in the first place. You know, I've done a lot of different circus disciplines, but when they offered me this job and said, well. We don't really know what it is yet. That's where I was sold because I wanted to do something that explored new territory like this. about 10 minutes to the start of the show. Uh, this is the automation control booth. I also share it with the stage manager. Well, we just started the awakening, which is the beginning of the show. This happens while the audience is still coming in. It's kind of set the mood and set the tone for the show. Five minutes to show, please. Five minutes. The general stage manager is the person responsible for the show while the show is running. So I'm talking to all of the technicians and the band leader and uh, giving cues to the artists also and telling them when to go, managing all the traffic on stage and orchestrating all the different elements to make sure it all works together as it should. 11.08. Go. Right here, we're in the 54, this is the technical area. All the technicians, they work here. Everything related to the show that we work on comes here if it needs repairs or modifications. This apartment is separated and each has their own color of road cases. Yellow is props, purple for automation, gray is lighting, red is carpentry, blue for rigging, black for sound, 
it really speeds up and organizes our stuff really well. The rigger's job is safety. So we're talking about acrobats in the air, we're talking about equipment up in the air. And as soon as the big top is up, that's when we come in as well. We test our winches, we test uh, ropes, we test everything before the, the actual artists arrive. Talking about every single wire, even at the top of the big top. We don't fix things. We prevent things. It's yes or no in rigging. You cannot be like, oh, maybe it will hold, or oh, maybe you'll, you'll be all right to go up in the air. That's a no, no, no. So Cirque du Soleil is pretty special in the way that they use automation. Uh, unlike theatres and things, we use it in a very unique way with uh, acrobats and artists to be able to fly them around, move them around the stage, uh, and we really assist them in uh, getting their acrobatic performance to their maximum. Right behind me, they're actually doing a, a rehearsal right now. I won't get in their way a little too much, but uh, Jake is operating uh, the console. He's also concentrating on the artists, exactly what they're doing, making sure the cues move in the right sequence at the right timings so the performance can go exactly as planned. Our job really becomes important when things don't go exactly as they should. Um, we we may try and make sure that through our inspections and maintenance everything runs as smoothly as possible and as best as it can, but either a, a technical problem or a problem with the artist can um, mean that we have to kind of divert off that uh, track that we've plotted to be able to make sure the show runs completely smoothly. And most of the time the audience doesn't even see that there's something that's changed. Artists, go, 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 go. Great show, everybody. Thank you very much. The style of music in Curios is somewhat eclectic. There's a lot of different styles. The, there is a big presence of electro swing. You hear a bit of polka and waltz, but then you hear some incredibly uh, almost rock and roll style of music uh, with influences from jazz. <laughs> The action on stage is never set at a specific time, which means sometimes an act could miss a trick, uh, do something wrong or redo something. In this case, we have to be ready and through our in-ear monitors, listen to our band leader who is going to give us the count. I have many switches, but there's one to open the mic. So I can tell them, okay, we're gonna wait, something's happening, I just count three, four, and we go. Every time there's acrobatics, there's open section, sometimes the solo, and when I see, okay, they made it, we go. We have figures that we punch the music with it. There's a lot for the drummer to, to follow the action. My role as a drummer is to basically not only support the kind of foundation rhythmically of the show, but also support a lot of the actions that are happening on the show. So if there's a, a flip or something, I gotta make sure I, as I'm playing my groove, I'll play and then I'll, I'll hit appropriately to where it needs to, if it's on the landing, if it's on a hit up, up top, anywhere, I'm basically glued to the action on stage. It takes some practice to be able to sing, focus on your singing, but at the same time, being able to listen to what your band leader is saying and what is actually happening behind. You have to be standby, on call, very focused. No, 
it's, it's Sirque du Soleil music, so it's very large and every musician put their own style in it, you know, and the composer, the Raphael Beau, did a great job, and uh, Bob and Bill too, they, they gave us very nice music that we can still enjoy. It was important for me to have characters that are uh, striking with the homme accordéon, Clara, microcosmos. It's important that people fall in love with those uh, characters and uh, it really has this special thing. I wanted to have microcosmos in herself and I wanted his, his um, almost his unconscious self, uh, the fragility of the character to come out of him and it's incarnated by Minnie Lily. To me, it was important that it, was, it would not be only about her height. It had to be about this, this sparkle that she has, this spirit that she has. She's got that Hollywood, timeless presence. My name is Antonina. Мой персонаж Мини Лили. Я родилась в Беларуси, проживаю в городе Минске. Это моя гардеробная, то ли где я гримируюсь каждый день. Здесь мои фото. And one of the challenge creating that character was a costume because I didn't want to get overwhelmed by the costume or the costume taking more place. And the character. What I like is uh, me walking a uh, car, very, very beautiful uh, actress. I understand car, car understand me. On stage, uh, the cinema. Cin it's like cinema, yes. Nico, I'm from Barcelona. The hand puppetry comes from my mother. She was born in a deaf family. Her father and mother were deaf. And she became a puppeteer. And she developed all these numbers that you could do with the hands. And she showed them to me. To get a knowledge from your family and to continue, it's, it's, it's very important. And it's one of the traditions of Cirque, actually, you know. Is it good? Okay, so goodbye. <laughs>